Well, from testing to treatment, we have received a lot of questions from viewers about the Omicron variant. And to answer some of those now, we are joined by infectious disease expert Dr. Dan Gregson and epidemiologist Dr. Christopher Labos. Thank you, gentlemen, both for joining us. So, uh, Dr. Labos, first to you, to you, and we have a question here from Kevin, who says that he's been in contact with a person who is confirmed positive for Omicron. How long before he might also test positive? So you probably won't test positive during the first few days of the uh, after the exposure. So day one and day two, you probably won't. But by day three, four, and five, uh, if you are infected, you probably will test positive at that point. And then, uh, if you know if you get too far away from the initial exposure after about day seven or eight, the likelihood of you testing positive starts to drop off again. Okay, very good to know. Next question comes from Joe with a question about masks. And so, Dr. Gregson, this one to you. Uh, Joe sees people wearing face shields with no face masks all the time, wondering how effective these face shields and face masks are against the Omicron variant. Short answer is they're not. Um, this is a bit of misinformation that, that face shields are used to prevent transmission of respiratory infections. That's not what happens. We use face shields in addition to masks to reduce the risk of transmission. So they're an added feature. They're not a single feature, so to speak. Okay. Uh, next question comes from Lori. This one for you, Dr. Labos, asking if there are any treatment options against Omicron uh, and asking specifically about antibody treatments that are widely available in the United States. Yeah, so I think this is a common misconception. There are actually multiple treatments for COVID, and there's no reason to think that the treatments for Omicron would be different than they would for all the other uh, variants of COVID. I mean, at its very basics, it's uh, uh, steroids, which were one of the first treatments to be used. There are some antivirals, uh, remdesivir being one. There are the new oral pills that were developed by Merck and by Pfizer, but those aren't uh, really used yet. Uh, and there are a number of other treatments as well. The concern has always been that antibody Based treatments might not be as effective because of the differences between Omicron and the original strains. But all this to say in brief, there are actually multiple treatments for COVID uh, that can help uh, speed the recovery of people when they're in hospital. But of course, always much better to not get COVID in the first place. And that's the benefit of vaccines. They actually prevent disease rather than treating you after you get sick. Right. Excellent point, of course. And back over to you, Dr. Gregson. Next question comes from Rod. This is a common question, actually, we've received a lot of asking about herd immunity. So if Omicron is highly contagious and a large percentage of the population of Canada were to catch it and then recover, would we be able to go back to normal? So uh, respiratory viruses aren't like some other viruses we see circulating in, in the environment. So um, what generally happens is we have a wave of virus come through, we develop immunity, uh, the virus then mutates a little bit, we have another wave of virus come through and we develop immunity. Um, our current problem is we don't, large parts of the population doesn't have immunity, so we're getting these big waves. Uh, and that uh, as we more and more develop immunity to just different variants, we'll, we'll have fewer and fewer waves and they'll be um, not as big as time goes by. Okay, last question to you, Dr. Labos. We're almost out of time, but this one from Jacqueline, who notes uh, with Omicron spreading so rapidly throughout the world, what are your thoughts on the odds of the virus going through another, even more concerning mutation? Well, it's certainly possible, especially if we don't control COVID globally. If we allow COVID to spread and to be spreading rapidly in various parts of the world, in various countries where uh, vaccine uptake is low, then yes, this could happen again. This is how Delta emerged. This is how Omicron emerged. So unless, you know, once this wave is over, if we don't realize and remember that we need to get vaccines to countries where uh, supply of vaccination is low, this probably will keep happening. So we have to remember that we have to control this virus, not just in Canada, but control it globally. Ugh. Thanks for nothing on that last one. Uh, doctors Dan Gregson, Christopher Labos, <laughs> gentlemen, really appreciate your time. Thanks for tackling these questions for us. <laughs> You're welcome. Take Have care. a great day.